Make a snack. Headless Pi install. That means setting up a Raspberry Pi without connecting it to a keyboard or mouse. Hello makers! So if you bought a Raspberry Pi like this, you really don't have enough to start. There's no power supply, there's no hard drive, there's no keyboard, and there's no monitor. So we'll help you get set up right here. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3 model B+. Now this is a really nice Pi board because it's got a lot of features in it, including Bluetooth, Wi-Fi access, and uh, it's fairly powerful. Now before a Pi can do anything, we've got to give it some software. Now on a typical computer, your software is installed on a hard drive. On a Pi, we're actually going to install the software on a micro micro SD card. Now it is possible to buy an SD card that's got all the software on it already. This variant here is called Noobs for new out-of-box software. But you might have an SD card lying around and if you do, we're going to show you how you can install the software over the internet. Now the technique we're going to demonstrate is referred to as the headless Raspberry Pi setup. And that's because we do so without using a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. And that's going to be the case for users that have modern computers because, well, many of them have uh, no wired keyboard that can be connected easily to the Raspberry Pi. And if you have a laptop, you probably don't have a separate monitor that can be plugged in via an HDMI connection. Now you'll definitely need a micro SD card, 8 gigs or more. Anything more than 32 gigs is going to be overkill. And you'll possibly need an SD card reader if your computer doesn't have one, and late model Macs don't. If you don't already have one, you're also going to need a power supply that works with the Raspberry Pi. So uh, if you have a USB charger, you need to make sure that that's a 2.5 amp 5 volt charger to work properly with the Pi. You should also have a good high quality cable. Probably is a USB on one end going to your power supply and the other end is going to be a micro USB to fit into the Pi. Quick shout out to Mitch Allen at DesertBot.io. Uh, he's got a really great step-by-step -step headless Raspberry Pi install for both Mac and Windows. If you're a Windows user, you probably want to jump over here. If you're a Mac user and you want to follow along with the video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set this up on a Mac since I've got a MacBook Pro with only USB-C ports. Now when you start out and plug in your SD card reader with your SD card, you'll see it mounted on your Mac desktop. Now I actually am using a card that's uh, much larger than the capacity I need. I have a 64 gig card. So I'm going to go into my disk utility first and format that in a special format that I need. And to get there, I'm just going to press command space to get spotlight to come up and I'm going to type in disk utility and press enter. All of the cards on the Raspberry Pi, if you're using a Macintosh, should be formatted in the MS-DOS format. Um, it's also known as FAT32, rather unflatteringly. So I'm going to click on my card, and then I'm going to go up here to Erase. I'm going to select MS-DOS. It says FAT afterward. And then I'm going to click on the Erase button here, and it's just going to set my card up so that it's ready to work with the Raspberry Pi. Click Done, and then you can quit out of Disk Utility. Now for those of you that are following along with the tutorial at DesertBot.io, uh, one of the first things that we need to do is to download an image to install on our SD card. So we're actually going to go over to RaspberryPi.org in our browser, click on Downloads. Now there are a few options here, but we want to choose the Raspbian one. That's the one in Mitch Allen's tutorial, and that's actually the one that I found to be more reliable. So click this Raspbian swirl, and we're going to download the option Raspbian Stretch Lite. And if you're wondering what the stretch is, Raspbian releases are named after characters in Toy Story. Stretch was the purple octopus. So with that bit of trivia, uh, click on the Download Zip button and save your image. I'm just going to save mine to the desktop. It might take a little while, but once it's down there, we will have what we need in order to be able to install the software onto our micro SD card. So we've got our zip file. How do we get the software onto the SD card? We're going to use a free piece of software called Etcher. It's available for both Windows and Mac. It's by a company called Balena, B-A-L-E-N-A dot I-O. So if you go to Balena dot I-O, take a look under products, and you want to select the one that says Balena Etcher. And on the Etcher page, it's going to know your operating system. So I'm going to download the version for the Mac, but you could select another version if you're on another computer here. I'm going to save it to my desktop. It's going to download the standard DMG file. And once that's downloaded, I can double click on it and start the installation of Etcher. Installation is super easy. It'll decompress into this Belina Etcher app. Just drag Belina Etcher over into Applications. Then you can double click on Belina Etcher right here. That will load up the app itself. Uh, you get a warning that you download it from the internet, but just click Open. You'll be okay. Select Image. The image that you want to select is the zip file. You don't even have to uncompress the zip file. Open that up, click on Select Drive. Remember, you want to select whichever one is associated with your SD card. So my SD card says right up top that it is SD Media. When you click the SD card, the check mark will turn green. Press Continue, and then you can just click on Flash. And if you're asked for your password, just go ahead and fill that out and click OK. Now I'm not being Rickroll, that's just a promo they have for their tutorial here. 
Etcher ejected the SD card for us, so we can quit out of Etcher once we get to 100% and we've also gone through the validation process. And these other files here are all installation files of the image and we shouldn't need those again. So we can actually drag everything here into the trash. Now we do need to do a little bit more with our SD card. So you can just physically take the card itself and pop it out and pop it back in or unplug your card reader and plug it back in if your card is inside the card reader. Either of those techniques should show a volume mount in the upper right hand corner, which is your SD card. Mine is named lowercase boot, but if yours isn't, feel free to rename it. It's not necessary. Now the next part of setting up the Raspberry Pi is going to seem a little bit gnarlier, and that's because instead of working with a graphical user interface, we're going to type commands into the terminal program that runs on the Mac. And we'll do this initially to manipulate some things on the SD card, and we'll also use the terminal to access our Raspberry Pi. Now, this can be prone to typos and things like that, but fortunately, this desertbot.io tutorial that I mentioned before, why don't you pull that up in your browser now? Because um, Mitch Allen had put together a bunch of the commands that we could just copy and paste into the terminal. So that's what we'll do. So you can see I've scrolled down on the page until where it says step three, enable SSH. And what I want you to do is to highlight this line that starts with touch and goes to SSH. And once you copy that or command C. Now, what this is going to do is we need to have a file on our Raspberry Pi called SSH. This is going to allow us to have a communication session from our Mac to the Pi, even though the Pi isn't going to be connected. So sort of like having a wireless call to the Pi. Um, the touch command says, hey, create the file. The file is going to be named SSH and that slash volume slash boot bit just make sure that the SSH file is going to go on our Raspberry Pi. So now that you've copied it, let's press command space and type in the word terminal. Press enter and that'll bring up the terminal program. Now once you're in the terminal, press command V to paste and press return. And this should have created the SSH file. And we're going to verify that it was created by typing in the CD command for change directory. And we're going to say change directory and we're going to actually use this uh, slash volume slash boot bit. So highlight that, copy it, paste it in after the CD and press enter. Now that switches our directory. And you can tell because the word boot is right here. That's what we switched the directory to. And if we follow that up with the ls command and press enter, that lists all the files in this boot directory. And look at that right there. We've got the new SSH file that we created. There's nothing in it, but it's there. So now let's switch back over to the web page that's got our different commands on it. If we scroll down here to step number four, add networking information, we can see that we're going to use the touch command again. We're going to create another file, and this file is going to be called wpa underscore supplicant.conf. So copy this line, command C, return to the terminal, and paste it in. Press enter, do an ls command that lists all the files, and you can see right here at the end we've got the WPA file that we just created with touch. Now we're going to edit this file. This file is going to have information about the name of our Wi-Fi network and our password. So we're going to edit the empty file right now by using the Nano program. Now Nano is a simple text editor. It's part of the software that we just installed on our Pi. So if we type in Nano and then space and then copy the name of this WPA file, paste it in after Nano space, press enter. We've opened up this WPA file. It's blank inside of Nano. Now let's go back over to this web page because this has got the commands that we need to paste into this file. So this little block of code here in step four from country down to the curly brace is what we want to copy. Paste that into nano. So return to the terminal, paste it in. Uh, we're going to want to make some changes to some of the things in here. So your um, PKS where it says equals network password, that's where you put your Wi-Fi password in. Network name is going to be the name of your network and you can find that under your Wi-Fi setting on your Mac. You want to type it in exactly with any spaces, uppercase, lowercase. Um, now you see country code up here where it says US. If you're from the United States you don't have to change that but there's a page up here in Wikipedia where you can go ahead and take a look for the ISO uh, 3166 country codes and just scroll down and put your two character country code up there if you need to but after you've made the changes um, for everything that you've got in here and I'm not going to type in my, my password and network name in here then type control X and follow the prompts to save the file and you'll get out of the nano editor and you'll be back at the command prompt and if we go over and if we take a look at what else we need to do we're actually done now with all of the configuration so the of the SD card the as SD plugged card. into our Mac. Right. Click on the card, select eject, and now we're ready to install this into our Raspberry Pi and boot the Pi. Now that you've ejected your SD card and you've got all the software on it, find the SD slot on your Pi. It's right on the underside right here. Insert your SD card with the metal contacts facing up. It'll only go in one way. It should insert about that much. 
Now power your Pi by inserting the power cable into the micro USB slot right here. My power supply has an on off switch too, so I've got to click the on switch on. A reddish orange light will go on. Light will go on to indicate that your Pi is receiving power and a green light will flash, which is part of the boot process. And booting usually takes about 30 seconds. Now with our Pi up and running, if we return to the instructions on our Mac, the next thing that we need to do is to generate a key that will allow our computer to communicate with the Pi. Just copy this one line here, this one that starts with ssh-keygen and ends with local, and launch terminal again, that's command space, type in terminal and press enter. Just paste that in, that's this ssh keygen line. Press enter and it's just gonna allow us to, for the Raspberry Pi to talk to our Mac. Now there's a chance you might get a message like I have here that says, hey, there was a previous Raspberry Pi connected to the machine. If you do, just go ahead and ignore it. Or if you get a host unknown, you should be able to ignore that as well. Everything should work right now. It's just clearing out some old information or creating some new stuff if it needs to. Now return to our instructions on the web page here, and the next line that starts with SSH and refers to pi at raspberrypi.local, that's actually going to start this communication with our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to see in the terminal access to our Raspberry Pi. Now this raspberrypi.local is the default name for a brand new Raspberry Pi. Now we'll eventually show you how to change the name of your Raspberry Pi, but for now, highlight this SSH pi at raspberrypi.local, copy that with a command C, head over to terminal, command V to paste that in and press enter. We're now wirelessly connected to our Raspberry Pi. If you get a message here that questions the authenticity, it's okay, you can just say yes to continue. You might also get a message here too, which points out that the key might be different. Again, this will probably show up if you had previously used a wireless Raspberry Pi on your computer. You should just go ahead and say yes if you get this, but you might not be getting these messages at all. Then it's gonna ask you for the Pi's password. And we can see if we go back over here to the notes, the password for every Raspberry Pi is Raspberry. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is to change this right away. We'll show you how to do that. But for now, just type in Raspberry. You can copy and paste it too. Press enter after typing in your password and you should see the prompt change just a Pi at Raspberry Pi, which indicates you have successfully logged into your Raspberry Pi wirelessly. Congratulations. Now next up, we're gonna launch the Raspberry Pi configuration tool. To do that, you just type in sudo space raspy dash config. You can copy it right in here, paste it right into the prompt, and that will launch this tool, which allows us to do things like change our password and change our host name. So with the configuration tool up and running, press enter on the first option to change our password, then press okay, it'll prompt us for a new password. So just type in that password and then it'll ask you to type it in again, type it in again, hopefully you got it right both times. Do save your password to a good password management tool. Uh, one password is a great choice. And once you enter your new password properly twice, you'll be returned to the Raspi configuration tool. You can just press enter in there where it says okay. Back at the main menu for the configuration tool, let's go down to option number two. So just press the down arrow key and press enter. This will allow us to select this first option here with an enter again to change the host name for our Raspberry Pi. And you can read the naming guidelines so that you know what name you can or characters you can't use when naming your Pi. Once you've read this and come up with a good name, press OK to enter it. I'm going to call my Raspberry Pi PiBot because I'm going to use this in a robotics project but feel free to call your Pi whatever you'd like, then press enter. By the way, pressing the right and left arrows inside of the configuration tool will allow you to select these different menu prompts like OK and Cancel. And with OK highlighted, press enter to select it. Then at the main menu, pressing the right arrow twice will highlight finish. You can press enter there to say that you're done with the configuration tool. You'll be prompted to reboot, so highlight yes and press enter, and your Raspberry Pi will reboot. Now remember, it'll take about 30 seconds for your Pi to reboot. Um, then what I'm gonna do is, uh, after my Pi is rebooted, the terminal has this really nice shortcut. If you press the up arrow on your keyboard, it will actually show the last command that you typed into the prompt. So my last command was the SSH command, which logged into the Raspberry Pi. Pi. I changed the name of my Pi though, so I'm just going to backspace over the host name. I still need to have the Pi at, but now I've got my Pi bot in here, and then also have your dot local afterward. You may get a message like this. This is showing up because you renamed your host and your computer is never connected to this host before. You can just type in yes and press enter. You'll also be asked for your new password. Hopefully you remembered that. Press enter and congratulations, you should be logged in. And notice to the left of the command prompt, you should see Pi at and then the new host name for your Raspberry Pi, congratulations. Now if we head back over to this instruction page here, you'll see two more commands to type in, sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. 
Now these commands update and upgrade the software on your Raspberry Pi, so I'm going to copy them over and then paste them into the terminal, into the prompt, and press enter one by one. You're going to see um, the installation scroll by much quicker. It's going a lot faster than it will in real life, but you want to make sure that you do both of those commands after you're done upgrading uh, your software, so you've done both the update and the upgrade. Uh, the one more last command that I want to make sure that you all know about is sudo space halt. This is what you should do when you're done using your Raspberry Pi. Now most folks that just go ahead and unplug their Pi, they won't run into any problems. But it is possible that if your Pi happened to be writing to your SD card, you could potentially corrupt the card and corrupt files. So sudo halt will initiate a proper shutdown. And also remember, after a sudo halt, you'll want to turn your Raspberry Pi off and on again if you want to restart it. Uh, you might also see another command in there called sudo shutdown that uh, can allow you, you can put some parameters in there to schedule a shutdown at a particular time. Most of the time you're just going to go ahead and straight up type sudo halt so you don't need shutdown. And with that, congratulations, you've installed Raspberry Pi via the headless over the network system. We're ready to start building robots. You can use this Pi for other things too. Keep at it.